everybody and welcome back to another episode of first and last uh i believe this is the last week of spooky month i think uh, it doesn't right. have to be i mean spooky month forever <laughs> am i right live every month right spooky boys month. you're right uh my name is josh with me this week we've got joe hey man and jimmy what is up well hello good sir spaghetti mm-hmm. what was it oh sp- spaghetti jim is that what you're going for? S- trying to, uh, spook Getty Jim. I was trying to go pasta pals, but with spaghetti servants. That's not right. <laughs> Hi, friends. I mean, <laughs> pasta pals should change to goulash ghouls during the month, right? Okay. Goulash? That's like Midwestern Italian. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I don't really know what a goulash is. Which is just is. bastardized Italian, probably. I don't I think of like like a spiral noodle, like tomato based. It's like a stew almost. It's like mm. a casserole. Um, if you go to the store and you buy a Chef Boyardee like chili mac and cheese in the can, that's like <laughs> sure. like you know macaroni noodles and like spaghetti <laughs> sauce and like hamburger meat. Mm-hmm. That's like the that's like a poor man's goulash. Interesting. I mean, a goulash is a, a poor goulash. man's goulash. Yeah, yeah. In general. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. but my grandma made a hell of a goulash. Girl. Yeah, I'm like I'm. That sounds good right now. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so that's the spaghetti portion of the podcast. Um, <laughs> like the word goulash sounds so like fancy though. It's Ooh, not. Yeah, man, I, mean, I don't. I we. I mean, do you want to look up the etymology of goulash? It's got to be Scandinavian of some kind. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, how is everybody's uh, spooky viewings going this month? Very scary. So good. Did you say very scary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the scariest. What are, you, what are you watching that's so scary? Um, uh, Not much, I guess. Uh, I guess just the most recent was we watched... Um, it was Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. Oh. It's of the... Oh, the one I watched is that it, yeah, with. Yeah. Is it oh, like okay. a reimagining or is it like straight reboot? Essentially, yeah. So it's it's spook, it's spookception. Is there's what like it is. seven or eight, like a Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and then a new Nightmare, which came out in 1994. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like like the premise is the actors who were in the a Nightmare on Elm Street movies are now being haunted by some sort of demon that is. Taken the form of oh Freddy Krueger, huh? So yeah, it's like very meta, and it's very like oh, this is what he was trying to do, like pre Scream, which came out two years later. Like Wes Craven oh. starred in this as well. Yeah, he oh, was really? like in the movie yeah. for quite some time. Robert England was in it as himself, <laughs> the man huh. who plays Freddy. For anybody yeah. <laughs> that doesn't know, oh, so it's like. The like the actors, yeah, yeah, yeah like, like Johnny Depp is being haunted. Well, yeah, because Johnny was Depp in, was a little okay, too obviously not, this, but <laughs> obviously he was yeah. busy doing a shooting a pirates movie or something. <laughs> huh, that's awesome. I finished the uh, like Evil Dead Army of Darkness. Oh, so you watched all three now? Not yeah, not spooky at all. No, that, wild. That, yeah, no, that one's not scary. Pretty fun. Oh man, we're gonna have so many cat noises in this episode. Uh, the it's possible. Stevie, the uh, production that'll be edited out in production. St- yeah, no, it won't. Stevie okay. the cat is uh, unruly currently. It's uh, technically late. I did not feed her before we started recording. So, <laughs> oh, you know what I did watch? Well, so Coco, which is just a great movie. Well, I mean that's just like a Dead Pixar Dead. movie, yeah. isn't it? I've yeah. heard good things. I've never seen it. Um, it's it's underrated. I know what you did last summer. Finally watched it. Mm. Holds up. So have we, Joe, I I asked you, I wasn't paying attention. Did you watch that? I've seen it before in my life. Okay. But like, like a week ago, I watched like the first half hour. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your episodics movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're all there. How did you, what did, what did you think? How did it, uh, it stand up? I mean, you know, I don't want to like spoil anything, but uh, don't want to ruin the movie for anybody. <laughs> for a '90s, is it PG thirteen? I assume or, or oh, all no, horror I think it's movies. R. Is it R? Okay, man. What is? It? I don't what in know that it has rated R. I don't. I don't know that it has anything in it that really warrants 
a rated R, an R mm. rating. You barely personally. ever see anybody die or anything. Like, you know, it's yeah. a lot of off screen kills. It yeah. is R, yeah. Wow. Okay. It must be like just I enough guess. stabbing. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you see some dead bodies. Mm-hmm. What are supposed to be dead bodies? They're pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> but you were going to say, it's like, fun. for just, yeah, just for a 90s slasher yeah. movie, pretty decent. Yeah, pretty decent. It's, you know, that's a star studded cast. It is. Yeah. I think we talked Love about Hewitt that last time. Is not as good of an actress as i remember her being <laughs> after watching ghost whisper and then that <laughs> it's like man you went pretty far on just some decent looks you it's, know? A, it's weird when you become an adult and just like the teenage heartthrob that you almost for yeah. surely had a crush on while watching these movies doesn't end up being a great actress like or actor when you have you guys heard adult. any of your music no dear god oh, no i don't oh, know she has I think it's the title track of her album, but she has this song called Let's Go Bang. I thought you were going to say uh, the title track of her album was called Ghost Whisper. <laughs> I, I was you to Ghost. Did. No, yeah, it's called Let's Go what? Bang, and it no is uh, great, question mark, <laughs> depending on how you judge your music, but uh, it sounds it's, great. Yeah, that's what you think. Great in the worst way. I also finished Over the Garden Wall, and oh. it is so much better than we gave it any credit for it okay. is so I would, good i was in, um, i think it's gonna be great i, 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 haven't I, watched I, f- I feel it. like we i feel like we didn't like give it like a bad shake at all but like watching other three like oh oh my god oh like this is so good huh i'm interested so as we said last week it is worth the movie's length of time to just 100%. finish all of it it goes by so fast. Those yeah. like eleven minute episodes, you're just like, man, I could, you could shoot through so many of these. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I did. <laughs> Way to go! Shoot them up. I shot them up into my veins. I was just gonna let that go for as long <laughs> as I could. Are you gonna edit that? No. Yeah. Got cool. no. Cool, 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 cool. Some listeners gonna be like, "Did my did my phone <laughs> stop? Do I gotta hit play again?" Sometimes you need to like let that happen and just let the people that are wa- listening go. What's wrong? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much long enough so they have to check their stuff. <laughs> uh, gosh, I'm trying to figure out what. Oh, so I started. The only really thing that I have is I started watching Halloween Kills. Nice. Uh, available on Peacock apparently right away. Ah, so ads. Yeah. Um. I don't even know if there's even ads on it, to be honest. It um, has a lot of spookies. But so, yeah, I started watching Halloween Kills, and I probably, I, I joked it, so I've only watched about half of it. But it's very like, we're going to kill Michael. We're all going to do it. We're all going to go kill him. And yeah, so, I mean, do it. Kind so of different. probably going to die. Kind of different from the other ones where they're running from him. They, yeah. they, they seem... They seem a little too empowered to fight at some sort of mystical axe wielding <laughs> demon man. It reminds me of um, Dream Warriors, the third Freddy mm-hmm. Prince Jr. <laughs> no, third Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, because they're we're gonna go. They're gonna go kill him. Take him on. Yeah, I'm doing bad. I'm doing worse than you guys at Spooky Month. I think. I think uh, mm-hmm. when the Ugh. nighttime comes and I should be watching spooky things, I I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> uh, or if I'm going to be <laughs> honest, tired. I'm playing Final Fantasy 14 with <laughs> 24 other million people. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's what's happening. But we're going to watch a spooky show today, Joe. Before we do that, what is first and last? Uh, it's a podcast where we take a TV show. Uh, and watch just the first episode, uh, talk about it, make some predictions, and then skip right to the end and just watch the last episode. Uh, so for this month, we've been doing spookier shows, um, which and with some of these spooky shows, there's kind of a mystery or things to figure out. Uh, so it's been kind of fun digging through these spooky shows. And uh, I think tonight we might have a killer episode. Hey, <laughs> are you gonna edit in some spooky sounds right there? Why do you always ask if I'm gonna edit? Spooky I'm not gonna drops. edit anything ever. Spooky cat sounds. I'm gonna edit the show like normal. Uh, your cat was definitely going to the bathroom in the litter box behind me dur- <laughs> during that pause. So. Give her a moment. 
Yeah, man. Synchro. What's scarier than a cat peeing on a <laughs> on a microphone? So this week we asked people to uh, write in and let us know uh, if they wanted a specific horror show at all that we wanted to watch. And we got something from a listener, Brian. I believe he's in California. Um, and it is American Horror Story 1984, mm-hmm. which is, uh, okay. I think it's the se- ninth season of American it's the Horror. the ninth? Yeah. So there's and nine. And just done one, right? We did the... F- or did we do two? Just no, one. we've only just done one. the first one, which I think was called Murder House. That sounds mm-hmm. right. Um, and I've been scroll. We have, we just, we've done too many of these podcasts. So I've been trying to scroll through our podcast to know when we did murder house. But at this point, I'm sure I've, <laughs> I, I've either missed it or you know, this is just uh, an exercise was it last in futility. Year? Spooky month. Yeah. I Probably. Hmm. Well, if it was last year, then I've, I've gotten far. I've, oh no, no, it was not October. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was. I just, now I know how many October. episodes are in a year. <laughs> Um, <laughs> October 21st, 2020, it, we did episode 161. Right? Yeah, yeah, 52 episodes in a year. <laughs> uh, American Horror Story, Murder House is, is what we did. So mm-hmm. since American Horror Story is an anthology series, uh, the seasons stand alone. So that's why, in a way, we're breaking our rules. Mm-hmm. But in a way, we're adhering to our rules. Sure. It's a separate series. Yeah. Kinda. yeah, anth- yeah it's, anthologies it's, it's essentially have different rules. Yeah. It's an addendum. Yeah. So um, this one is called American Horror Story. The season is called 1984. It was the ninth season of it um, that was from September. It was originally on FX, which they all are. September 18th through November 13th of 2019 is when this one aired. Mm -hmm. So I think there's supposed to be a season 10 for sure. I don't know if that's airing now or not or what covid did to that mm. you know so i'm assuming it's if it's not airing it's on its way i would assume but uh the one thing i kind of know about this one is uh number one i don't believe dylan mcdermott is in it anymore was mm. that the guy that was in the first season yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> uh he's not in it uh but it's uh so it's 1984 so i think it's a yeah like a and connie Britton. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Those are the two from one we watched. It's it's kind of like a like a sleepaway camp, Jason. Like you know, old this old camp. But I don't think it's like the campers are there and like the murderer kills people. I think there's some sort of like people go back to the camp or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it's that nineteen. It's like nineteen eighty, like the nineteen eighties, early nineties, like kind of thrasher thriller. Love it. Horror movies is kind of what this is going to be. So we haven't really watched anything like that this month. Mm-hmm. No. Um. So we're just gonna get some good old fashioned, uh, scary slashing. I'm scared already. Let's do. How many it. episodes? Good question. I bet it's like ten, eleven. It's uh, Net- Netflix nine series mm. only nine only nine so actually really short yeah to know yeah i think i mean obviously there's a bunch of people in this that were in other uh, seasons but i don't think really anybody from the first season that we watched is really in this Mm -hmm. anymore how do you know wait so this is or isn't the most recent one um this is the most recent one that is on netflix Oh, oh! Because this show is not a Netflix show. No, it is an FX show. Ah, because there is a season ten that's already done. Wait, as of yes, uh, as of the October twentieth. So as of recording <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and just finished. Has... Yeah, literally just finished. Neil McDonough in it. That's not what we're watching. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. I'm excited to watch like maybe something more like traditional horror Mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, The one thing I think I had a problem with that I am, I'm like, I need to go back and finish Halloween kills, but like my body doesn't want to Mm -hmm. not because it was like scary, (laughs) but because like it's a modern, like a, a modern, I feel like sometimes like 
modern horror movies that are kind of like, you know, Halloween or Jason or like that stuff, they almost seem too, too clean. Hmm. Not like uh, like like the filming and everything. It just seems like it like you need some dirt and it needs to like just seem like kind of uh, grody or some some grit. It needs some grit. So I'm hoping that this will give me a little uh, maybe a little grit feel or something like that. Nice. Yeah. 2013 trying to look back at um, 2019, 84. You just said numbers. <laughs> Set hike. <laughs> well, what did, where did 2013 uh, come from? Because this came out in 2013, right? No, 2019. Oh, this came out in 2019? This season came out in 2019. Oh, well, yeah, then that's way off. <laughs> right. Because well, yeah. of the pandemic. So it's, there it's 80 it. slasher through the lens of like 2019, I guess is what I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, like, uh, like the Halloween kill. That like, thing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm just picturing Stranger Things, but with uh, more spooky. Mm-hmm. Uh, even probably less like alien monster thingies. Right. Sure. But Mostly as far just... as the, as far as the like feel of, of things and, and you know, the stooms. That's, that's short for costumes. Ah. If you if you watched any Halloween heists of Brooklyn Nine Nine, you'd know the term "stoom." Just ha- what haven't Charles <laughs> Boyle calls costumes. Uh, what do you guys think as far as because there is kind of a two two kind of things that happen in in these like kind of eighties thrillers is that either it is a Jason or Michael Myers type killer that is kind of like an unstoppable, like, you know, like gets stabbed monster, in the face yeah. and keeps coming. Unexplainably or unstoppable, yeah. do you think it's going to be a more grounded, like just like bad person killing people? Hmm. Like you got any thoughts into that? I think I figure monster like a Jason or a Mike Myers. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be wearing some sort of mask. And it's just going to turn out to be some deranged old camp leader or camp kid. Mm. Camp kid, like just a four-year-old camp he's kid. A, he's a, he, he was abused at the camp by the YMCA director, and now he's just murdering everybody. <laughs> but you said you thought <laughs> you thought this is a crew who's like coming back to the camp. I'm not a hundred percent sure like adults or something. I just don't think it's going to be like a bunch of teenagers at a camp it's not getting like murdered camp. or something like that. But I guess I'm sure. not a hundred percent sure. Um, I forgot okay. what I was about to say about that part. Well, uh, no, I'm not going to read that. Cause that just tells me what it is. I'm just, I almost, I almost don't think that we're going to even see a per se, see a killer mm. in the first episode. Hmm. You know, I feel like maybe in the first episode, someone's going to die. You see death, but no. We see no death. We see death, hmm. but we see no, like, I could see that. I could see them in the first episode, like, pointing you in a bunch of directions. Like, who mm-hmm. is it? You know, like, making you think it's, like, one or two people. Yeah. Like, for sure. Um, Like, Max and... Uh, uh, you know what you did last summer? Oh, oh, yeah. Max definitely didn't. Uh, Who's totally the Big Bang Theory guy, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, he did better in know. this role than he does in all of Big Bang Theory. Because hmm. well. that show sucks. <laughs> uh, so many people love it. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, okay. I mean, hey, let's just let's just watch the first episode. Let's dive into it and see what happens. It's called pilot. It is not. <laughs> God, it It'd is be not. amazing if they just called <laughs> the first episode of every anthology season pilot. pilot. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not sure. I hope they pick up our anthology series from season nine. Uh, it's actually season one is called our episode one is called Camp Redwood. So okay. I believe we know what the camp is called. Cool. So let's watch that and we'll be back after that. And we're back. We're done with the first episode of American Horror Story 1984. It was called Camp Redwood. Jimmy, do you have a write-up? Uh, 
I thought I did. <laughs> Debatable whether you do or don't. Uh, yeah, I do. But the one that was directly in front of me was season one. Okay, Camp Redwood. Here we go. In 1970, three camp counselors are about to have a threesome in a cabin, but one of the female counselors hears jingling. A mysterious figure enters, and the trio are stabbed to death. As the scene opens more widely, it reveals the sleeping campers have also been killed. In 1984, Xavier Plimpton leads an aerobics class for Montana, Ray, Chet, and Brooke. Xavier describes the terror that the Night Stalker is wrecking on on L.A. and says he is escaping to the reopening Camp Redwood to avoid the murders. Also, something about the Olympics, though, was an important part of that. Mm -hmm. Right. The others are convinced to join him as counselors at the camp. Brooke declines at first, but relents after she's assaulted in her home by a man claiming to be the Night Stalker. The next morning... The group goes on a road trip to Camp Redwood. At the rest stop, the gas station attendant warns the group that they are going to die after discovering that they are headed to the camp. The group's vehicle hits a man lying in the road. The group agrees to take to take him with them to get medical attention. Wait a minute. This is, this is longer than I thought. Okay. Then the camp's owner, Margaret, instructs them to take the injured man to the infirmary where the camp's nurse Rita tends to him. Margaret takes the counselors on a tour and explains the rules. They encounter Chef Birdie. Oh, I forgot about Chef Birdie. Uh, also, an orig- oh, she's an original camp counselor who volunteered to reopen the camp with Margaret. That night, the counselors gather around a fire, and Rita tells them of an incident that closed the camp 14 years before. The accused killer was Benjamin Richer, a.k.a. Mr. Jingles, Mr. a Vietnam Jingles. vet who was discharged dishonorably. Rita claims there were 10 victims. Margaret approaches and corrects her that there were only nine because she was the sole survivor. Um, and she was the star witness at Jingle's trial. Oh, okay. Now I understand that part. Wait, no, I still don't. <laughs> what do you need from us, Jimmy? How can she, we enlighten She said you? she was talking about um, a trial, but it wasn't Benjamin... Richter was somebody else because then they're like who's so and so I thought it was was it Benjamin Richter I'm pretty confident it was huh because she okay. testified against him essentially and that's how he's in jail for the murders of all those people right. or some sort of asylum interesting potentially hmm. uh, okay well he was sent to a mental institution after that then Brooke finds the amnesiac man awake and guides him back to bed. He is confused about the camp reopening and warns her that something bad is going to happen. Trevor Kirchner, uh, AKA uh, glee, glee guy, um, glee teacher, man. Um, looking, will, will look, looking jacked as hell in this. Yeah. Will Schuster. I don't feel like he was that jacked in glee. I feel like Mr. Jingles would make a great name for a glee teacher. <laughs> <laughs> This is just a Glee spinoff, actually. <laughs> well, like Ryan Murphy is the creator of Glee, right? He's the creator of American Horror Story. Oh, is it the same person? Yeah. Weird. So there's, there's a connection there. All right. That's a, yeah, that is an odd, that's an odd portfolio. To yeah, have. right. Um, also, Mr. Jingles is John Carroll Lynch, who plays Drew Carey's brother, Steve, in the Drew Carey show. See, I don't know him from the Drew Carey show. I feel like I've seen him in a bunch of like creepy stuff, though. Oh, he's in a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so Trevor Kirshner, Mr. Glee, he's the activities director. <laughs> him and Montana are like about to like have sex in the lake, but they're interrupted when Montana sees approaching car headlights that uh, looks have, like it's just watching them they have to get out of the water because his giant dong <laughs> might get struck by lightning <laughs> lightning rod Ugh. all right at, a, at this is okay this is the last bit at a facility for the criminally insane dr hopple is informed that richter has escaped three hours earlier richter in his cell lured and lured in an orderly whom he strangled to death 
Hopple finds a newspaper clipping in a cell announcing the reopening of this camp. Uh, the gas station attendant, Roy, is repairing a car from underneath, and Richter crushes him by lowering the jacks, uh, takes his truck, and drives to the camp. In the infirmary, Brooke finds the amnesiac man impaled on a hook and is pursued by Richter. She reaches the others, but they do not believe her. The hiker's body is missing when they investigate. Unable to sleep, Brooke hears the payphone ringing. She answers it and hears the jingling of keys while being observed by the quote-unquote night stalker. And then the credits roll. I've been so calling that him uh, Satan Man. Yeah, Satan Man. He was obsessed with Satan. He was comically obsessed with Satan. And he attacked her, but he really just like robbed her. Mm-hmm. And right. then... So and and in the thing in the write up it says like he claims to be the Night Stalker he he tells her he's the Night Stalker but isn't the Night Stalker supposed to be a murderer he was just like robbing her yeah and loving Satan and like she didn't have like enough jewelry or whatever so he was like oh it's a waste of time yeah and then she hit him with like a frying pan mm-hmm. anybody that like including this man who's like he he said like hail satan so many times or like yeah, he said swear to satan swear to satan like like someone he, would say like, swear to god yeah yeah <laughs> he said that so many times while like in her apartment at the beginning uh-huh. and then and then satan, like damn it and then also like <laughs> margaret's like a super jesus lady yeah like anybody anybody mm. in any one trying it, to push a theme here well just in any field of that anybody that's just like hail this person blah, 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 just mm-hmm. like you're an insane human <laughs> just yeah. like I don't, I don't care too hard. I don't care what part of the spectrum it is. It's like, I don't have anything to do with you. <laughs> Slip it in uh, like casually. <laughs> don't make me, don't make me hail anybody right off the casually bat. Casually <laughs> hail stuff. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> what, uh, what were you guys' original, just what are your in- intro thoughts on the, on the app? Um, I like the cast. I think that's my initial yeah. thought. Um, a lot of a lot of just good looking teens. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean, mean they're all like thirty, good looking yeah. thirty year olds pretending to be teens. Uh, and I saw Emma Roberts in the opening credits. So I was like, ooh, fun. Yeah, she's in like a lot of like fun horror stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And and just I like Emma Roberts. Yeah. And then uh, the other girl, Montana, was it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, played by Billy Lord, who is um, oh, forgetting her name now. She's Lieutenant Connix in the Star Wars. Yeah. Um, Is that what you're going for? <laughs> yes, because she is Carrie Fisher's daughter. Oh, in like real life? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. This is like, why is this woman in all three of the new Star Wars movies? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Right on. I mean, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And then just like those two are fun, and then the rest of them are just like fun, eighties caricatures. Yeah, which is fun in its own way. They were definitely pushing the eighties theme like a little too hard of just making it seem like all people did in the eighties was do aerobics. Yeah, do like sex aerobics. Like sex, it was sex aerobics. I've never been to a gym that's actually charged in my entire <laughs> life. No one has. They're only yeah. in the DVDs. <laughs> And then they pushed, like, even when uh, Brooke, she starts getting chased by Mr. Jingles, the second that, like, she sees him and she turns to run and, like, an 80s beat and, like, synth drop. (laughs) And it just definitely makes things feel a little bit more wacky and a little less, like, threatening, (laughs) which is pretty fun. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not mad about the, the like kind of wacky intervention of everything 80s in it. I think that's also like pretty accurate though. If you watch like a nightmare on a nightmare on Elm Street, like Freddie will come in and do something creepy and then you'll just hear like this cheesy 80s music, which like to us is cheesy, but I feel like back then it was just like, that's just what movie music was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. They, they're, mm. they're loving that source material mm. uh i mean so okay jimmy what was your what were your uh thoughts on this yeah you know i liked that i like that i feel like there's enough going on like so they they spent a lot of time setting up this like initial crew of the two gals and three guys mm-hmm. 
And then you're kind of like, Ugh, if this is just like them and they set up the murderer, mm-hmm. if it's like, if it's just going to be that and like, like that, that can't be what it is. So then they throw in some random creepy, um, counselor characters, camp characters that you don't really know anything about them. And then they throw in like spin in, in the last like third, this, uh, sane asylum, like escape and, and literally probably some murders from this guy. But it was, it was a little bit like, like, I'm going to be pretty disappointed if it's just that guy, like not to spoil my predictions, Mm -hmm. but like, in before anything happens, Nurse Rita is telling them about this guy around this around the campfire, mm-hmm. and like you've seen the the opening scene was this like murderer in the seventies, and you see the jingly keys and the trench coat. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if it's just this guy, if it's just like you're showing we're we're watching Halloween, you're showing Michael in the first scene, and then you're just running from Michael for ten episodes. That seems that sounds awful. Right. Nine episodes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they're going to do that, though, just because I, I've i seen like the first and third seasons of the show for sure. And I feel like mm-hmm. they they have like, I mean, I was originally going to say it's like a poor man's Shyamalan twist, you know, like they. Yeah, there's always, there's always some sort of weird twist. But I feel like at this point, a poor man's Shyamalan twist is just a regular Shyamalan <laughs> twist. <laughs> bet, yeah. uh, so. So I just, I don't think like that's it. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it went like freaking like cabin in the woods and like there was elder God somehow or something, something insane Mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I think that's what we're all thinking. We'll see the elder gods. (laughs) We're all thinking elder gods. Yeah. Um, but (laughs) what (laughs) cabin in the woods? Um, but, Uh, oh yeah. I have yet to watch that one this book month. Oh, that's a great one. Well, it's on the, it's on the streamings. Yeah. Is it a horror movie? I debatably no, but yeah, well, still absolutely. still a great movie. It's part of the genres. Sure, that exists yeah. within it. It's almost satire at this point, though. Um, well, everything Joss does genre wise is a spoof of that genre. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, the thing I really liked about this episode, and it might be annoying coming up, but it was just kind of like because you know this show is like an anthology, and they're doing like a nineteen eighty four nineteen eighties like. Th- like obviously like camp killing kind of thing they tried to they basically threw every like trope in like at the same time like there was the creepy dude at the like at the gas station that's like you're gonna die you shouldn't go there <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said there was a die. guy that escaped from an insane asylum who like murdered a bunch of people beforehand mm-hmm. there i mean maybe newer but like yeah there's some other crazy guy the Night Stalker, maybe. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, there was that. I, I wrote Satanic main girl threatened by guy. Satan guy. Um, obviously, there's just a group of horny teens that are like Classic. at a camp in the middle of the woods. Uh, they in a eat, cabin in the woods. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre type scenario where they hit a guy mm-hmm. like in a car oh, right. on the way there and then brought him with. Don't do that. Like, you know, <laughs> Um <laughs> Yeah. You can't just leave him. And then drown him in the river. You know, they even they even did like the like somebody like gets killed, somebody sees it and then nobody believes them cuz the body's gone. Mm-hmm. Like that happened and I know what you did last summer. I mean that ha- like it mm-hmm. happened in a bunch of things. But there's just so many different things that have happened in so many thriller movies like this that they just kind of shoved in all at once. So it's either going to just go, okay, now we're going to start making it a little bit of our own. And we're just like, we just really want like, right. This first episode was just like, th- you know what you're like, this is a eighties mm-hmm. inspired, like crazy thriller. I will say after the first episode, like I would, I would go into episode two. Yeah. I mean, the only thing, so honestly, there, it was like, some pretty gruesome like just like thriller like stabby kills at the beginning you know yeah which sometimes on tv i'm like whoo didn't expect that one to happen yeah. it mm-hmm. was on fx i guess right so mm-hmm. they can do a little bit with that mm-hmm. i mean in, in reality the only thing that was almost missing if this was like a 80s horror movie was like there just wasn't like a weird amount of like fake like i was gonna say teenage boobs but it's not teenage boobs it's 
30 year old boobs mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 counselor boobs yeah body double boobs body double boobs like DBs. so i think they did a really good job of that and i <laughs> liked it like like it, it felt yeah. good it felt cheesy but like you know watch a watch a jason movie from like 1987 mm-hmm. if you that i mean it's cheesy as hell but, but they're Will great. Schuster parading his giant dong around. Dude, that dude was g- dude too. Like, what's up with these jacked dudes, Chet? Great, great muscle mass in this episode. <laughs> a lot of mm-hmm. muscle mass. <laughs> a lot of muscle. Well, one, mass. yeah. So Chet's whole deal is that he got banned. He got tossed from his like Olympic team of whatever sport. I don't even know if that came up. Yeah, I guess we should go through just like the cast of main characters especially the maybe the the kids are the yeah the kids are the big <laughs> are the big thing what did the cat do behind me if there's no just like uh, try to know. climb up a frame that wasn't really <laughs> stand onable oh i see what's going on um, all right well cat almost try to kill itself but everything's <laughs> fine so moving we on see xavier who's like leading this aerobics class and he, so he's a little bit of like the ringleader. Um, also, he's the one who's like t- trying to talk all these people at his class into coming to this camp with him for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have like, it seems like aerobic, uh, like people who are, are like aerobic regulars, which is Chet, the Olympian, hopeful. The I Olympic wrote hopeful. Uh, Chet dash. I wrote Olympics slash chiseled out of stone. That's what I wrote about Chet. Yeah. He's also pretty angry well, <laughs> about not He'd be pretty going. angry if you trained for the Olympics and then didn't get in, right? He definitely seems like he has that, like, that, like, NFL, like, if, if he had a girlfriend, he'd, like, hit her kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, running back vibe. NFL in general. <laughs> but, yeah, for sure. Ray Rice vibe. <laughs> um, and then you have Ray. Ray's so we cool. We don't really know anything about Ray. Uh, you know what we know about Ray? Huh. He's the coolest one. He's the cool dude. He's so cool. <laughs> He's the one who like is the nice guy who should end up with Brooke, but like Brooke likes Chet because he's jacked and smiled at her once in, in aerobics class. Right. So then you have Ray and then you have Montana. Oh, I guess we do. The thing we know about Ray is that he's like the instigator of just drugs He's like doing bumps of coke the whole way uh, in this in Xavier's van. Um, so then we have Montana, who's like an aerobics, like L.A. regular. And then you have Brooke, who seems she's like the new girl in town. And Montana's kind of taking her under her wing, sort of. And uh, Brooke's not going to go to camp, but then she gets attacked by the Night Stalker. So well, then I mean, she joins them. It, but it seems also because she didn't get like, randomly attacked by this nice stalker guy. He was like asking her for a thing that she seemed like she knew what he was talking about. That's what I gather about like having about like the jewelry and stuff. I don't know. He just when he was in her apartment and he yeah. was like, "Give me this," blah blah blah, or like you know, like I I can't okay. quite remember what the conversation okay. was. He was like. Where's the jewelry? Yeah, he was looking which, for something which, specific. Oh, interesting. Looks like he was looking for okay. something very specific. Oh, interesting. I did not get that vibe. I just thought that's a thing that, you know, burglars say. Like, where's the expensive stuff? <laughs> Show it to me. Because then she, like, gave him his, the jewelry. And he's like, this stuff sucks. <laughs> it's like, give me your purse. And then empties it out. And it's like, you're poor. Like, yeah, this is L.A. I'm a, like, <laughs> young adult. Yeah. We're all poor. <laughs> Yeah, we're all baristas. <laughs> um, so Montana, Xavier, Chet, Ray, um, do do do. Uh, I mean, those are those are all the kids. Those right? are the kids. Yeah, those are like the main cast, I'd uh, say. Yeah, and then the only two other ones that kind of were like the three other people that were like bigger in this episode were obviously Margaret. She's the camp owner mm-hmm. slash was an original victim of Mister Jingles slash. Mm-hmm very uh religious allegedly yeah the fundamentalist wacko wackadoo yeah so that's an important probably thing about her i, know, I feel like if you survived a like mass murder you can kind of believe in what you want yeah you find religion <laughs> after that well that you know what that's fine but it was a thing she talked about a lot so i think it's important <laughs> it was the thing they were definitely trying to drive into that she is this is how, who she is 
Uh, and then the other one was Nurse Rita, and she was just like, mm-hmm. I mean, essentially like the hot older nurse, I guess, <laughs> that was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to hang out with the ca- you ca- camp counselors and be cool and chill. Mm-hmm. I don't That's do, I cool. don't smoke weed. I smoke Marlboro Reds. <laughs> I think mm-hmm. it's, but yeah, like actual cool, not like a glee guy, like weird. No. Thinking he's cool, but like. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, then that brings us to Glee, Glee yeah. teacher, which his name was Trevor, and he's like, I mean, he was basically like the senior counselor, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. he was yeah. Jack to hell S- facilities something. It, it made it sound like he's like a he's like the events guy. He's probably in charge of dodgeball and stuff. <laughs> I mean, like typical eighties, like shit. Like he walked in with like a six pack of beer, and he was like. Fuck whatever the main <laughs> the 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 camp leader talks about. We gonna drink and party, keep these kids alive. <laughs> oh, and he said he made a bet with himself that he's gonna bang Margaret by the end of camp. That was a funny part because Chet was like, "What? What? You, you made a bet with yourself? What? A, <laughs> yeah, how do you make he, a bet with yourself? He, a couple said, bucks. he said he bet himself fifty dollars. <laughs> so I don't know where he's gonna get that. Where he's where he collects, but. <laughs> Either way, I guess, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's kind of it. I, I guess I never said I do. I did like it. And yeah, I, I'm, I would roll into episode two mm-hmm. based on this. This is fun and, and good, good, uh, fall weather. I think right now to be watching a show like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we, uh, it. should we go into what we think might happen? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think this is going to be wild. You seem excited. Fire Joe. it up, Joe. Yeah, um, for whatever reason, my first prediction was about Satan guy who <laughs> played a mi- minor point, minor part in this. But I said Satan guy is a good guy. Ooh, I think he ends up being like one of the good saves guys. The and day. Maybe even saves the day. Hail Satan! He'll save us all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that Margaret, the uh, camp leader, um, is actually the murderer. Hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not part of my prediction, but I think that like, oh. Oh. I think that back in the seventies or nineteen seventy when the original murder happened, I think that she did it and like framed Mister Jingles for it. She, did she think she cut off her own ear? Yeah, damn, 100%. that's hard. Um, but so I think that she's like the murder, the actual murder in this show. Okay. <clears throat> I will just stop you there and say I 100% agree with all of those things. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what I think is happening. And yeah. I also have that prediction. <laughs> I might have something near that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing that made me think that is that the, uh, the guy that they run over, like already has his ear cut yeah. off and already is like trying to warn them about like, stay away. Yeah. Um, and like the guy hadn't broken out of prison yet or mental institution right. yet. So, right. Still remarkably chill for not having near though, even though he was like knocked out kind of thing. Yeah, I just right? still think, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's number two. I think that I think Brooke kills someone. Mm. Like I'm not even sure if like just for fun. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> even sure if it's like a she's a bad guy too, or if she's just like killing someone to like save herself. But I think she ends up killing someone. Um, and then hmm. my last one, I think that someone plays an arcade game. <laughs> like Galaga? I like to some, see that. Yeah, hopefully some Atari. Mm-hmm. Maybe a, if it's pinballs, it not count? No, I think it has to be okay. a like, video arcade. Okay, it, 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 awesome. Yeah, no. Uh-oh. Tapper. Ooh. That wasn't, that wasn't around. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> uh, okay. You don't think so? I bet it was. Yeah, it probably was. Uh, my first one is, mine, mine was Jesus loving Margaret is in on the killings. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily okay. think there's a single killer. Mm, okay, I think Mr. Jing- Mr. Jingles obviously kills. We've people. seen him kill. People. He's killed. Uh, <laughs> but He's the only one we've I mean, seen for sure. Kill I think she uh, she's definitely in on it per se. I I wouldn't be surprised okay. if she's like working with him. Mm-hmm. You know, like he escaped to come here because he knew about it. Because like she maybe sent him like it takes paper more than one person to kill and, all and the stuff. sinners. It's so, true. So Jesus loving Margaret is in on the killings. I think Trevor. Uh, Glee teacher, he gets his head chopped off. Jeez. Mm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Top, top head. Okay. Oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> uh, I think only Brooke and Ray survive out of the the kids, the five original 
teens that mm-hmm. come. Nice. I don't care about the right. counselors or Nurse Rita or Trevor or any of that people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but out of the five original kids that came from L.A., mm-hmm. her and Brooke and Ray survive. You don't think uh, Ray dies first? No, man. <laughs> Ray's too cool. <laughs> And number four, I think when the cops show up after this is all done, because, like, right, the cops are going to show up at the end. Mm-hmm. I think they all show up after it's all quote unquote over. You know, everything's over. Mm. One of the cops dies then. Mm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like. One of the cops is missing an ear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> may, yeah, maybe they find a dead cop with no, no ear. Weird jingly keys on him. Yeah, I think that's like the killer strikes again type scenario. Cops are here. It's over. Cop dies. Those are mine. Cool. Um, I just realized you think it's weird. He, uh, Mr. Jingles, he specifically takes the gas station attendant guy's keys so that he has jingly keys on him. Like, I mean, I guess he's, he takes them to steal the truck, right? But guy's got a brand. It's also just a big metal ring of yeah. keys. He likes the jingle. Guy's got a brand. So I put it's not. It, it's not Mr. Jingles slash it never was like in the way that Joe said of, I think it was Margaret mm-hmm. because my number two is Margaret is the killer because mm-hmm. of all the things that Joe previously said. <laughs> um, also that I think she's in the car, like watching Montana and Trevor in the water. But oh, you doing, think that was her? Doing, doing bangs, yeah. Could have been Satan, guy. I think it's... Eh, yeah, I suppose that's true. But I think she, specifically with her, like, you know, her t- attention to sin, I feel like she's probably watching everybody all the time. And then number three, I think Brooke and Chet are the only ones left. Okay. Chet has too many roids to survive. <laughs> He has roids, but he's you know he's he's tortured soul, and he apologized to Ray. I think he's gonna come out the good guy in the end, not the good guy you want, but the good guy like you in need. every eighties. The, the one we uh, deserve. The one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. And then uh, I think number four. Then I think Karen. Oh, we didn't really talk about Doctor Karen and Art, who is Mitch Pileggi. Hell yeah, Mitch Pileggi of X Files fame. X Files slash Sons of Anarchy slash is he in Fringe? I don't know. Just no. kind of assume he's in Fringe, but maybe not. I just well, I think that they are in this episode and they capture Jingles. Oh, you think Pelagi and the, the I think, other lady? I think Karen, Doctor Karen, and Art capture Jingles. That's what I have for number four. Okay. We shall see. Uh, the last episode of American Horror Story 1984 is called Final Girl. Came out on November 13th, 2019. We're going to watch it and we'll be back when it's over. And we're back. We're done with the final episode of American Horror Story 1985. It was called Final Girl girl uh my goulash gal over there jimmy do you got Aww. it right yeah. up i forgot what i called it the goulash uh, goulash ghoul ghouls yeah. the goulash yeah it's kind of redundant really yeah 30 years later richter's now adult son bobby returns to a decrepit camp redwood looking for answers having been sent checks from an unknown benefactor since childhood he is met by Montana and Trevor, who explain that Richter disappeared after being dragged into the lake and never returned. They reveal what happened in 1989. To prevent further deaths, traffic, Trevor blocks traffic it's hard to, say, uh, to the Camp Redwood entrance, and Margaret shoots him off camp property and leaves him to die, but Brooke appears and helps him onto the ground so he can return as a ghost. Trevor's ghost then attacks Bruce and kicks him off the grounds to die. Yeah. Bruce is the Night Stalker guy? Yeah, no, no, that I, was I Rick, Richard. 
Oh yeah. Ramirez. What does Bruce do? Oh, Bruce is the other guy. Yeah, he's just the other killer that we'd never seen before. Oh, that's the guy right, with the bandaged right. hand. I forgot about that part. Okay, then the dead counselors determine that the only way to stop Ramirez is to kill him over and over, which they do for thirty years. Uh, back in twenty, back into uh, twenty nineteen, Ramirez awakens again, manages to escape, and attacks Bobby. Man- Montana ushers Bobby off the grounds and directs him to the asylum. There he meets Donna, who further elaborates. Oh, her name is Donna now. That's not the nurse. <laughs> I mean, I mean, or, or is this a new person? I guess I didn't look. I uh, thought it was the nurse. It, it was. I thought it was Nurse Rita. Unless she just her maybe name's her name's not real. Name's not Rita. Maybe her name's Donna Rita. Could be. Um, she further elaborates that in 1989, the ghosts brutally murdered Margaret, but not before Brooke seemingly died in a struggle with her. Donna and Bobby trace Bobby's money to a still alive Brooke who survived with Ray's help and is living a quiet life as a wealthy housewife in Oregon. Bobby again returns to Camp Redwood where Margaret's ghost repeatedly attempts to kill him, but he is saved by Richter Lavinia. I think is how you say that. And the counselors. Bobby shares a tearful farewell with his family and departs. Happy endings. Yep. All totally, around. Totally happy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the gist of it is 30 years later. Well, 35 years later from the first episode because it right. was 1984. Uh, right. Son of presumed killer Mr. Jingles comes back to look for dad. Now all those people from the first episode are ghosts. Apparently because, this is just a normal thing. Because ghosts now uh, gets, if you die inside the camp, you stay as a ghost, which yeah. was, it's an inch, that's a, that's a, see what I was saying, that Shyamalan twist. But it, it, and it seemed like this is something that we've known for a while in this show. Did anyone else get that? I think, so, yeah. Vibe. Mm-hmm. The, like the rules were known. In this episode, it I was, guess you would assume they would probably have figured it out pretty soon because they obviously the the hitchhiker guy got killed in the first episode. Yeah, so he's probably back in the second episode as yeah. a ghost, you know, hundred percent or something like that. So, or they probably are ghosts from the nineteen seventy mm-hmm. killing. Right. Yeah, right. also that. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, heck, if you know that, at some point, maybe you think that uh, Margaret's a ghost for a while, potentially even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah, the twist is who's not a ghost. <laughs> it just becomes uh, n- name oh, that Lord. ghost. Uh, yeah, I mean, we called it out while we were watching the episode. They I mean they killed Margaret. All the ghosts killed Margaret in a fun way to try to make sure she would die. They tried to ma- in a in, fun in way. A, they killed her. In, <laughs> they killed her in a fun way, but in a very lazy way because they. Chopped her up and put her in like a wood chipper mm. to shoot her like goo basically mm-hmm. over the edge. But it's like, well, she's going to be dead before her like mm-hmm. remains spit to the other side. Right. Because they're trying to make her not live on as a ghost forever. They're trying to just right evaporate they, they her. They could have done that better. If it was like you like ask the town dunce to like come up with a way to make the ghost not come back. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, we shoot her dead body over the wall. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah but she'll be dead but she'll be dead before you do that they were because then even montana was like your brain lives for like 30 seconds after decapitation mm-hmm. but then they threw it into the wood chipper on its way over yeah, i thought they were gonna maybe throw her head over they could have just yeah. thrown it right over i thought they were gonna chip the whole body and then just toss the head yeah. if that if that's your understanding of how the brain works after decapitation then don't throw it into the wood chipper <laughs> And also there was, because so the thing is, the ghosts <sighs> can't leave then the camp. They're kind of stuck mm-hmm. within the walls, the metaphorical walls of the camp. Mm-hmm. But there was at least, Nurse Rita was ghosts, there. Ghosts uh, ad- adhere to property lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, whatever the property lines are for that camp. So if the camp uh, buys more property, do you think they can go? Oh, yeah, for sure. Then yeah. you extend that ghost. The ghost range grows up. But like Nurse Rita was there, and she was an alive person, mm-hmm. and so it's like we were like she could have just 
pushed the wood chipper to the other side, and then they could have just thrown her body. Yeah, she was there, and she was fine. Yeah. It's kind of heavy, though. I don't know if she could push it by herself. The ghosts can push still. They could have pushed it into the That's kid. true. For being ghosts, they, they very were solid. really active. Yeah, yeah. Very solid. Very solid individuals. Um, I mean, yeah, interesting. Oh, and then the other thing, yeah, they... Uh, they killed they killed a devil boy um yeah but since he apparently legitimately <laughs> had like the devil inside him or some sort of devil blessing yeah to keep him the devil resurrecting yeah the devil kept resurrecting his actual body yeah so sending him back they were just keeping they just kept him at that camp for 30 years and just killed him over and over and over again until yeah, he they just took shifts to who would watch him and kill him when he wakes up yep. and i mean presumably at the end of the show they were still doing that right because they recaptured him he yeah. got away because yeah. uh chet and the and the chef and the chef lady were like about to like they were naked after 30 years we're going to decide like at that moment they needed to try to <laughs> sex each other up yeah like maybe when you're not on watch huh folks it's yeah, pretty and, like, easy they, they have a guest like come on they have a guest there's a live <laughs> human guest here like literally any other time it would have been like okay you could stop him before he gets to the gates like this is the one time you have somebody there a human it's possible they didn't know that he, he was there or he would kill yeah. Yeah, who he's made it his life goal to go kill. Yeah, oh. that's unclear, right? Why he wants to kill the son of the Jingles man? I think he, because it seems like Jingles had done some good stuff right. at some point within the show. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean he mm-hmm. murdered somebody at the very beginning of the show, right? Yeah, or maybe not even had done some good stuff, but he had become enemies with... Satan, Margaret, <laughs> and her two Satan boys. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is interesting how she was chummy with Satan boys because based on how Jesusy she was at the very beginning. Maybe was, was that a, a sham or was, was a sham? Or did so she get coerced? I did read the season, the episode two description, and it sounded like she, <laughs> um, uh, she meets Satan, Satan boy, Night Stalker. And then, like, hires him to protect the camp from Richter. And that's how he gets involved with her. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. That's what it, that's what it, the description says. Uh, Joe, if you go into the kitchen and ask, uh, uh, Lindsay for some, uh, napkins or something, you can probably clean up your, your, your drink spill. <laughs> We've had some technical difficulties. Joe will on be the back. Show. He decided he got too excited for ghouls. And spilled we'll, a little, spilled we'll a little drink. Right, we'll be right back after these sponsors. No, no, we we'll, we get Joe will be back right. Ah. <laughs> um, but so what's up? I mean, I, yeah, I I thought it was kind of interesting. It was it was fun. I'm wondering how. Yeah, I'm wondering how much of the show doesn't have ghosts in it or when, mm-hmm. when the ghosts appear and how much of it is eighties thriller killers at a camp. And then when it turns into this, like, you know, now there's ghosts. Yeah. I mean, man, you exclaimed a little, a couple times as well. Like those ghosts, they just, everyone just murdered each other so much. It was intense by the end of this. Yeah. Just like, throats being slit. Trevor slit his own throat at one point just to prove a point. Well, yeah, Trevor in Montana when uh, the uh, the when Mr. Jingle's kid came, they were like, "You got a gun? Shoot me in the head! You got a knife? She slit my throat!" They were like super into it because they're like, "We're ghosts." Yeah, really wanted to prove that they're ghosts. I don't even know if they and wanted, did. <laughs> if they wanted to prove it, they just wanted, they to, just feel wanted alive. to like that. Probably still hurts, right? I mean, I don't know, what do you man. Think. But I guess not. Like if it's gonna be physical enough to like visually show, there's got to be like pain with that. They hmm. did an interesting thing because yeah. so like when they died, when when uh, Montana shot herself and shot her ghost head, and mm-hmm. then Trevor slit his ghost throat, they did like spurt blood, and then mm-hmm. like they appeared on the other side of the like outside of the cabin door mm-hmm. when the guy tried to like run away. 
but and then when he turned back their bodies were gone but there was still like blood splatter like on the ground oh interesting and i don't know if that was just like a bad continuity yeah (laughs) bad continuity or like somehow like they uh, like ectoplasm maybe yeah Yeah. i like it I like we, it. Can we can we blame that as ectoplasm? Just yeah, just like the entire spill on my pants is just ectoplasm. <laughs> yeah, it's just ghost the the ghost of your drink. I spilled like an inch of old fashioned like <laughs> mostly on my pants, which was good. Um, and then yeah, and then some on the chair. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, you did get away with the whole f- middle section of this podcast by precariously balancing it on like the arm of a like <laughs> recliner <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a arched like an arched arm of a chair that is not even and also fabric mm-hmm. so like not <laughs> not a solid like thing anyway mm-hmm. so you, you pushed fate just a little <laughs> too much it's spooky yeah. month it'll happen it's the yeah. time what are you gonna do <laughs> Luckily, I don't have nice things, so I don't care at all. <laughs> uh, Joe, what, Joe, what were your thoughts on this episode? Um, I feel like we had like wacky, maybe not wacky, but we had like wild predictions about where this is going, mm-hmm. um, and it still was like <laughs> way off base. Yeah, way like even just that it started the show opens and it's 2019 and we're just like Whoa. yeah did not see that coming <laughs> like, yeah, a, like prius, is this a prius yeah a prius drives up and it was just like oh boy we're we're you know uh, unless this flashes right back to 1984 after this like we're into we're way off in whatever territory we're in and then yeah to mm-hmm. have it be ghosts which is not something i would have called like yeah. all of the like slasher killing must have been within like the first like maybe three or four episodes right and i feel like maybe i made my predictions for just like that arc of it and did not see all of this ghost stuff coming yeah yeah i definitely didn't i didn't think uh ghosts were like if you get killed in the in the confines of camp redwood you're stuck in camp redwood forever so is that what a haunting is then. I mean, I like they, we they, they were technically haunting yeah. ago, and we did the ghost whisper, and we'd had that thing about how she said, "Go." What was it? She said something about ghosts haunt people, haunt people, not places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, and then, but then it turned out they totally <laughs> haunted places and that thing. <laughs> but isn't like a poltergeist what haunting people is? Versus places. Oh, I don't know. I thought a poltergeist was just like a ghost that like moves things. Huh. Okay. Interesting. I mean, in in that term, they were definitely poltergeists. I, yeah. I have to finish watching that movie <laughs> so I <laughs> do not come up. It's weird. They they kind of just say the same thing in um The Conjuring, which I watched recently. They say like that ghosts haunt people and not things. Interesting. Like it wasn't the Annabelle doll. It's they're haunting you or something. Hmm. Well, this definitely this show definitely follows the place rule. Yeah, they're they're hunting this Very camp. Much. Yeah. So just Can't don't go even, to the camp. You're cool. Don't even exist outside. I hmm. mean, unless you want to be a a ghost forever, then jump into the confines of that camp and kill yourself. That's true. Yeah. How do they forever? know that they can't leave? I'm sure that, that happened at some point sure where ex- someone like tried to run explained. away and they hit a wall or like they got out and they disintegrated then reappeared hmm, yeah. like in the camp or some, you know, hmm. just run into an invisible wall and just keep trying to run when they're standing <laughs> in place. It's like the wall of the holodeck. <laughs> You'd also think, so one of the, so at the, the, the very last Shyamalan twists is that, so we said like Margaret comes back cause she says she died a second before and then Richter comes back, even though they haven't seen him. They know he died like in the river or lake or whatever. And they haven't seen him for 30 years. But he comes back like in another surprise and kills Margaret for two seconds. Yeah. But so like these ghosts haunting this place, they don't even know about all the other ghosts in it. <laughs> yeah, that's that seems wild to me. How big is this place? 
I mean, it's a camp in the middle of, uh, you know, the woods. They might have some acreage. But ghosts don't have any sort of other sensory thing to know. They just, they're just walking around like normal people. Like, oh, you, are, are you a ghost too? <laughs> Can no, you see no me? they're not Jennifer yeah. Love Hewitt. I think they know which are ghosts or which aren't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even though she claims she can tell. Can you see me? I don't believe uh, her. Yeah. Uh, one nope. thing that mildly bugs me about this whole se- this whole season of season nine is they all have episode numbers, and then for whatever reason, uh, episode one hundred is episode six of season nine. Okay, and it's just called episode one hundred. Mm-hmm. They're all mm-hmm. like Get that they all, syndication They all have their own Names and titles And then episode 100 is called episode 100 Maybe it works in, You don't know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> All I gotta do is be watching some show On TV and be like This show is episode 100 Of Gunsmoke It'd probably be like four. Did we talk yet about how um, when the guy who's like the present day 2019 guy shows up at the camp for the first time? Pringles' his son? Yeah. Pringles? Pringles. Jingles. Pringles' his son. <laughs> um, you just can't stop. Once he pop. He's like, he's got his phone out and he's like taking pictures and videos of stuff. And then when <laughs> the ghost of Montana sees him, she's like, hey, what's that? And he's like, it's my phone. And she's like, no, it's not. What is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's not a phone. Because like, she hasn't seen a human in like you know maybe 20 years. Right. right. <laughs> so she hasn't seen a cell phone. And then she asks him if she can keep it. <laughs> so also that oh, means yeah. if they have power and he brought his charger and he would let her keep the phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's just got, they just got, in. they could like watch Netflix and hang out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Hook yeah. this camp up. Right. Bobby? I would, if, yeah, if I was him and I knew there was a bunch of ghouls, especially like my dad, <laughs> I'd be like, here's a laptop and like a charger. Does this place still have energy? Yeah. <laughs> Who's paying the power bill for this place? Yeah. <laughs> well, he said they didn't have Wi-Fi, so he'd have to like bring them oh, some DVDs true. or something. Oh, I mean, get a hot cool. spot. Yeah, he Bring said he didn't have service out there. A DVD player and just like a box mm. full of DVDs. Yeah. I would do that for ghosts. If you I knew did. there was a place where there was just yeah. ghosts forever. You just, just stand, like, uh, kick it in from the... From hey, here's a GameCube. It's from 2005. Oh, God. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Imagine first time with a GameCube. <laughs> if I found this... Yeah, this is, this is my new life plan. Find where Camp Redwood is. <laughs> Bring these ghosts media that they can use. Without internet, mm-hmm. potentially set up internet, like get a crew <laughs> in the meantime to mm-hmm. like drill internet. And just, hey, just don't go inside. Set up the jack right here and just throw a bunch of cables over this fence. Then when I'm like 80 and I'm about to be dead, I'm going to walk in there and then kill myself <laughs> and then live forever and be like, that's my GameCube. I gave it to you 40 years ago. <laughs> I call next game. <laughs> We're going to play Mario. We're going to play Dr. Mario for the next hundred years. I got the perfect plan to live forever. Hmm. Doesn't sound bad. Yeah, it didn't seem like they were having a bad time outside of like, you know, once in a while you got to take a kill shift on yeah, Night Stalker. Yeah. And it must but, be you honest, know, that's I, like your one job. I don't think they minded. Yeah, it's not a hard job either. I think they pretty much enjoyed the kill shift. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty weird thing to be your job. You're going to murder this guy for as many times as it takes for the next few hours. <laughs> yeah. That's your job. I wonder how long he comes back. Is it like a Walking Dead zombie where it's like sometimes it takes three minutes and so, or sometimes it takes four hours? I don't know. The one that we saw, she said, like, we have about 20 minutes. Also, this is the first time in, okay. like, 30 years that the devil's, like, smoke undid his, like, lashings, like, his, like, bindings. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was a new thing they were trying. The devil? <laughs> no, like them. Um, this is the very first time in thirty years. I mean, the first to tie him few up. times we saw him when they did like a flashback, he was just lying on the ground. He opened yeah, his true. eyes and they stabbed him. To he t- wasn't bound at all. It was more of just like they were just waiting for him to kill him anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. Just waiting there with a chainsaw. <laughs> oh dear God! Uh, should or we you see- just kept him underwater? 
Just kept them in a tank of water. Ooh, yeah. That would suck. Now, now we're getting weird. Let's go. Because then he just wakes up and drowns every 20 minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then eventually, you know, you're not looking because then you get, that's that's the thing with the devil, right? Is you're eventually, you're, uh, he's you're gonna, like. He's going to like empty out the tank somehow. Yeah. Eventually, he's going to ghost somehow smoke himself, smoke water out. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I like it. That'd, that'd probably work for a few years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> no, for, for a little bit Love it Anyone uh, going to finish the series? Interested mm. in watching the rest? You put them in a really deep hole Like you just dig like a, a yeah, 10 just foot lock hole lock him in a room He would be able to dig out eventually though, right? Yeah, but then you can at least like And then it's know, a sideways hole you, you can like just check on him every few hours then Instead of every 20 minutes and kill him immediately You just right. be like all right, we've given him enough time to dig. He's getting close. Let's kill him. <laughs> yeah. At least, like, if you locked him in some sort of thing he couldn't escape from, you at least have a while before he, like, starves to death, right? <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of time on how we would all keep murdering a man <laughs> for 30 you can't years. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of time on this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so back to my question: uh, <laughs> Anyone interested in watching the rest of this series? Uh, I could. Um, honestly, if this was a little bit more straightforward of just like um, a send up or satire of 1984 slashers, I think I'd be more interested. Mm-hmm. With all this other ghost stuff, uh, I'm less interested. Yeah, so the Shyamalan twist doesn't do it for you mm-hmm. as much. I think it's too much. I'm curious to know when that twist hits and how much it gets. Cause I feel like it's not as like, uh, for some reason I feel like it's not going to be as silly as them murdering a man for 30 years. Like it was in this one, you know, mm-hmm. it's probably more 1984 to 1989 times for most of the series. So mm-hmm. probably eighties feel. So I am still interested in rolling into episode two, at least, and then seeing where it takes me. Jim, yeah <laughs> yeah i guess i'm somewhere in between there between those because I, I do think it lost me at the ghosts so i'd be interested in seeing yeah where that happens i feel like i feel like that must happen earlier than later which means you must know that margaret is the killer earlier than later so then it, it's like where does the show really go from there mm-hmm. so but it's only nine episodes. Yeah. We already, already watched two of them. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Might just watch Over the Garden Wall again instead. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> pr- Joe, predictions. Uh, yeah. Um, so I think my first one was that... Uh, oh, no, it was about the Satan guy. It was, it was that Satan guy was a good guy. Uh, mm. Which was absolutely not true. It was nope. categorically super the, false. The lesson here is never trust Satan guy. <laughs> uh, so it's also zero never for that. trust Jesus lady. Also, yeah, one hundred percent. Do not trust. Um, and then my next one was that Margaret is the killer, which is true. So point for that. Um, someone plays an arcade game, uh, mm. which was not that did not come to pass. Unless that cell phone counts as an arcade <laughs> game. Yeah. I think it counts as an arcade. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one is that Brooke kills someone, which, you know, she had some action points and was helpful in, like, trying to capture Margaret, but... Um, she really mostly just got stabbed herself. Yeah. She didn't really yeah. kill anyone. So, one point. It really it could have gone either way, mm-hmm. but she lost. All right, one point for Joe. Uh, my first one was Jesus loving Margaret is in on the killings, which is obviously very true. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Trevor gets his head chopped off, and you know he gets his dick shot off. Yep. So I was wrong. Um, only Brooke and Ray survive. Only Brooke survived. Yep. Yeah. So. And Nurse Rita. 
Well, and North Rito. But I was talking of the original five. Right. So. Uh, I, I thought saying only Brooke survived was too much of an obvious scenario, so I added Ray and screwed myself on that point. Mm. Um, and then number four, I said when the cop shows up af- when the cops show up after it's quote unquote all over, um, one of them gets killed. But uh, <laughs> that w- it was thirty years later, so maybe in season episode like seven or eight, the cop showed up and that happened. But. Uh, you could think with all the murders that are happening all the time in this show, there'd be more police. Yeah. Murdering people, most likely. Yeah. Cause Why not? Because of the topical things. Uh, Jimmy. So what did you get? You got one? I got one. I had... My number one is, it's not Mr. Jingles slash never was, and that was true. Uh, and then my number two was that Margaret is the killer, and that was true. Then I said Brooke and Chet are the only ones left, but Chet, I Chet, Chet I looked up. He died like the second episode. Oh. <laughs> he died like right away. Um, and then I said Karen and Art captured Jingles like back to the asylum, and they were not even in this episode. I mean, and obviously they didn't because he died there. He died. So yeah. yeah. So that never happened for sure. Yep. So, but two points, huh? Two for. Way to go. That's the kind of that's the kind of gamesmanship we need. <laughs> okay. I'm just. You gonna... <laughs> Good job. Way to go. Oh, Way to get you. two points. You know, gotta keep this. Uh, gotta gotta keep my title. The t- gonna be the Tom Brady of first and last. Everyone's gonna hate you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 do you hate Tom Brady? I feel like when he went, to, I hated him, and then when he went to the Bucks, I was like, eh, okay, now he's just an old guy. It's kind of fun. And then he won again. And then he won again. Because <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. And then he won anyway. Uh, oh boy. Well, I guess that. Uh, I guess that's it. That's it for uh, American Horror Story 1984. Thank you for your uh, suggestion, Brian from California. Uh. It's, uh, I think that's the end of Spooky Month, technically. Uh, but remember, Spooky Month is always in our hearts. <laughs> Never ends. Keep it spooky. Keep it spooky. Stay spooky. Stay spooks. Uh, if you want to do uh, give us a show, a show suggestion or just date us up for whatever reason, you can as well, listeners, at F and L podcast on the Gmail or on the Twitter. Um, we also have an Instagram. Do you know what it is, We got Jimmy? a gram. <laughs> Uh, um, FNL podcast, I believe. Yeah, it's probably right. Um, you know. It's probably in the link below anyway. Like, whatever you're listening to this on, just uh, look in the, the script. All yeah. those things I just said are in there anyway. Just tap wildly. Yeah. Cookie Crush that or something. Is that, is that a <laughs> candy, tapping game? Can, candy Crush? Okay, yeah, sure. I don't know. I don't know how cell phones Quasi, game. Quasi Cupcakes. Stop it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, first and last, thank you for listening. We'll be back for another one next week. Uh, until then, yeah, stay spooky. Goodbye. Goodbye.